Hello friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac and my plan for today's show is to show you everything. My complete review systems. This is where I work. These are my working systems. There's more than one. And I'm going to show you everything piece by piece. Now I did this two years ago in March 2021, but almost everything that was here then is gone now. Not well, yeah, like 95% of it is new. So enjoy it and you'll see how I spend my days <laughs> making reviews and making content for you guys. Oh, but one other thing, there will be an Audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in this episode. And I'm going to start with this Zoo Dirty Weekend. I reviewed this uh, late last year. I love this speaker. I'm a big Zoo fan. That big driver on the top, that's a 10-inch full-range driver. Below it is a super tweeter. Made in Utah, by the way. Now, this speaker, <laughs> this speaker is the Pure Audio Project Duet 15. This is my main high-end speaker that I've used for most of the reviews I'm doing lately. And, oh, by the way, I'm going to give you some previews of, work, of uh, products that are in the works. But anyway, the Pure Audio Project is, as some of you already know, is an open baffle speaker, meaning it's not a box speaker. You can see the drivers and they, uh, the driver, there's as much sound coming out of the back of those drivers as the front. It creates a very large, spacious sound field. Now, <laughs> as for the uh, amplifier rack here, the rack is made by Quadraspire. It's a UK company. Now, the amp on top is in for review. That is the Linear Tube Audio Zotal 40. It's an output transformerless EL34 amp, 40 watts channel. It's wonderful. Doesn't sound like other tube amplifiers. It's a whole different ball game. So below it is another LTA amplifier, the Ultra Linear, which is 20 watts, also output transformerless. And this is the first watt F8. And then below that is a pass XA25, class A 25 watt per channel amplifier. Now, I like low powered amplifiers so much so <laughs> that I went nuts over this little guy. This is the Zen Triode by Deckware. 2.3 watts per channel. <laughs> it's just a lovable, phenomenal little design. But, but here's the thing, I did that a few years ago. I just got in, literally just days ago, this latest Deckware amplifier. This is a 300B amplifier. Those large tubes to either side of the power transformer are Western Electric, made in the USA, uh, power tubes. And there's a lot of tubes in there and a lot of room for uh, tube rolling and tweaking the sound of the amp to your liking. This is the CD transport. This is a Jay's Audio CDT2. It's been here a few years, fantastic. And then below that is a Past Labs XP30 preamplifier. And that's the Mola Mola Tambaki DAC. Well, the best sounding DAC I have ever heard. Coming back up again, that's a first watt F7 class I amplifier. And this is also in for review. This is the Linear Tube Audio Microzotal preamplifier. It's a reference preamplifier. Tubes, phenomenal sounding. This is the Parasound JC3 Plus Phono Preamp. This has been one of my references for longer than just about anything else here. About four years old, I think, at this point. It's not going anywhere. And the turntable. Now, last time I did the, the tour, I had an SME Model 15 turntable. Very high-end UK turntable. And it has been replaced with this. Yes, a Technics SL1200G direct drive turntable, far less expensive, but you know what? No regrets. I love this turntable and the cartridge on there, I just reviewed this days ago, is the Lyra Delos moving coil cartridge. Wonderful piece. I'm gonna show you some cartridges on the left. The Zoo Denon 103 moving coil cartridge in the center the Grado Platinum 3 moving iron cartridge, that's the low output version, and on the right, the Ortofon SPU number one. Continuing on the left, that's the Ortofon Cadenza Blue low output moving coil cartridge. In the center, the Dynavector XX2, 
low output moving coil cartridge, and on the right, the Audio Technica Art 9X1. <laughs> you know, I'm sure that some of you guys recognize this speaker. This is a Klipsch RP600M Mark II, the current version. It has a horn loaded tweeter, as you can plainly see. It is the least expensive reference speaker I use, and it is phenomenal. A real honey. And below it, by the way, yes, that's a REL T0 subwoofer. It is not being used most of the time, but when I need to use a tiny subwoofer, that is my reference. Oh, and on this side of the room, there's also an Emotiva TA2 integrated amplifier. Here's an odd pairing. Uh, that amplifier is the NAD M23 200 watt per channel class D amplifier that I absolutely love. And above it is the first watt new tube preamplifier. And that is an amazing piece of work. It's basically sold as a kit, as far as I know. This particular one, though, this one was hand assembled by none other than Nelson Pass. And I'm thrilled that it's part of my, in this case, definitely permanent collection. I'm sorry if you can hear that noise outside. There's, a, there's actually a demonstration going on on the streets of Brooklyn. Yeah, live from New York. Anyway, that speaker to the left, that's the Buchart S400 Mark II. Definitely a mainstay in the system, along with, to the right, the KEF LS50 Meta. Now, here's two very, very different DACs that have stuck around for a long time. On top, the Border Patrol, which is a, a tube DAC with a difference. That tube is actually not in the signal path. That is a tube rectifier. And the DAC below the Border Patrol is the Denifreps Ares, just a modern classic, in my opinion. And then below that is a Pass Labs HPA-1. It's a, it's a headphone amplifier, but it's also a preamp, definitely sticking around for the long haul. And below that, an Oppo UDP-203 Blu-ray player that I use as a CD transport. Continuing, here is a new piece of shit. Now, this is a 10 watt per channel amplifier <laughs> with an unpronounceable Nordic name. And there's also, and that one is $300, actually $299. And I'll also be getting a two watt per channel uh, shit amplifier. And then below that is the Jotunheim preamplifier slash headphone amplifier. That is one of my mainstays. Below that is a bigger piece of shit, the shit Vidar 200 watt per channel class AB amplifier. And below that is, well, the first watt, the first first watt that I've ever heard in my system, the J2, which remains massively popular. I think is by far the most popular first watt amplifier ever made. Okay, here we are back at home base, looking at what I see every day, and I am a lucky guy. But anyway, I just want to take a second to remind everyone out there that I'm going to be doing an entire episode from beginning to end of just Audiophiliac viewer systems, your systems. And whether the system is of new stuff or vintage, tube, solid state, analog, digital, headphones, whatever, it's all welcome. The only requirement, and this is a strict requirement, is nice pictures in focus, nicely lit, well composed pictures. And you send them to me at audiophiliac at mail.com, like it says on the screen right now and include the description in the very same uh, email as the one with the pictures. Don't send them separately. And what else? Yeah, I think that's it. Send JPEGs. JPEGs are the only acceptable format. Don't send 20 pictures. Just two or three is fine. And with that, I can say let's take a look at today's Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. I have to say Hans Johans system is rather special. He lives in Sweden. But his speakers are DIY three-way open baffles with active crossovers at 80 hertz and 2.1 kilohertz. Now those big mid-range drivers on top there, those are 15-inch mid-ranges. Mids and highs are driven by a set of, in quotes, Creo 8-watt solid-state Class A amplifiers. They're actually Krell headphone amp clones. The woofers and subwoofers are driven by a, in quotes, classic 150-watt Class AB amplifier. 
passive preamp was made by Lumley. Turntable, Marantz TT15. Phono preamp, Laryngeau Gallo 2.4. CD transport, TAC T1. And the DAC is a Musical Paradise MP D2. Thanks, Hans. Okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. To do so is really easy. The address is on the screen right now. You can join for a couple of bucks a month, up to 50 or even 100. Patreon accepts payment in dollars, pounds, euros, actually most currencies. Um, think about it. Check out my website, my Audiophiliac Patreon website. What else? Uh, hey, if you just want to subscribe to the channel, that would be fantastic. And if you like a particular video, please remember to hit the like button. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.